If you don't gain new clients, you will fail. Keep watching this video to figure out five ways to gain clients for any insurance business. Okay, I'm Cody Askins. I started when I was 19 as an intern, made 117K in my first eight months. I used several of these ways that I'm going to share with you, and I'm going to share them with you right now, so don't go anywhere. The very first one to just jump right in on how to gain clients is face to face networking. Okay, there's several other ways. I believe that every way is actually going to get better the longer in the video that you stay, and it may have a special deal at the end of the video if you watch the entire video, so we'll stay tuned and wait for that. Okay, so face to face networking. What I'm talking about is there are a lot of local things that you can do that you can help. Okay, so like for instance, a lot of PNC agencies will network with car lots or take by popcorn or whatever so that they refer them business. All right, there's chambers, you can create your own networking group. My father created his own networking group a few years ago. He gets referrals weekly because of that specific group and the networking that takes part in that. Okay, even if they're not looking for coverage, just beginning out in networking and meeting with people lets other people know that you're, it lets me know that you're serious about this business. Okay, and that you will be here a very long time and it publicly puts attention on you that hey, I'm, I'm no fly by night insurance agent. I'm not part of the 92%, I'm part of the 8%. And face to face networking is a great way to get brand recognition, to meet people, to network with people. Okay, Coach Bert's talking about right now about a top 25. You need a top 25 that you can network with in your market, across the country, whatever. And face to face networking, even though old fashioned, can still work. So don't forget about the opportunities that come from actually getting out in face to face networking. Okay, the second one. Second one is cold calling. Now you can use this. You could say that we're talking about cold calling in door knocking. Okay. You could say cold calling as in actually making calls. You could talk about consumers. You could talk about businesses going B to B. Okay. Or B to C. Okay. That's a way that a lot of insurance agents have built their agencies, their companies, their brands. When I was a brand new agent, okay, I used to bring over three to five college kids over to my office every Monday night. We would call from about 5.30 to 8.30, about three hours every Monday night, and we would cold call for life insurance. And I would walk out of there with eight, 12, 16, sometimes even 20 appointments, and my whole week was booked up because I was leveraging cold calling to gain clients. Now, I, I bet 50, 60% didn't keep the appointment, but that's besides the point. It was activity. I was trying to gain clients. I was doing it in a creative approach without spending a bunch of money. Okay, there's a lot of different ways to succeed and cold calling, even though also old fashioned, can still work. You could say, well, you know what? I'm gonna also call aged leads, all right? If they're a couple years old, that thing is probably a freaking cold call. Right now, I'm gonna treat it like a new lead, that's what I do with a script, okay? However, doing that can still benefit you because the whole goal is to gain clients. Typically, activity and getting in front of people is what actually gains you clients, all right? Number three is current client referrals. Current client referrals. So, don't you think about that for a second. What are some creative things that you can do in your business with your clients to get more referrals? Is it events? Is it marketing? Is it networking? Is it spending time with them? What does that look like in your business? Could you do, for instance, here in Springfield, Missouri, I, I know some agents that just put on a massive client appreciation event. Okay, I believe it was, I think it was like Bass Pro down the road. Okay, and they had, they had like, 400 clients show up. Do you think they're going to get referrals from that? Do you think they're going to get repeat business from that? Do you think they're going to have a good retention rate with their client base because of that? Okay, so I want you to think outside the box for a second. Do, are you sending your clients, for instance, are you sending them a birthday card? And, and I'm not saying a birthday card that says, hey, happy birthday, thanks for your business. That's old school, That's it's, it's stupid, and it's, it's, it's greedy, it's selfish, right? I'm saying, hey, happy birthday, Betty. Back in 1942, when you were born, you could buy a Coke for five cents. Today, it may cost you a dollar, 
So have a Coke on me and throw a dollar bill in the freaking envelope or the freaking card and say, happy birthday. Don't mention your business, right? You can drop a business card in there if you want, but it isn't about that. It's about them focused, not you focused, right? Okay, so that's one way. Also, I used to send, I used to send newsletters every single month. Okay, it was a physical newsletter. It was probably about this size, all right? And I would have, I would have recipes. I would have new updates. I would do trivia where if you call in, you get a gift card. If you refer somebody, you know, I may give you something, right? I'm, I, I would release a new product. I would talk about, I would show a picture of me and my wife maybe, you know, or our dog or whatever, right? And it would be a way for me to create this relationship with them, this custom bond of I'm not gonna leave this dude because he's stepping outside the box and he's here and, he, and he's relevant and he's, he's in front of me and he's serious, okay? So I would send out monthly newsletters. I got to where I was sending out five or 600 of those, handwriting them every freaking month, okay? And when, I, and, and, and when, you're, when, you're, when they're first doing business with you, are you sending them a thank you card, okay? And, and, and get creative with a thank you card. Don't be fl flipping boring like everybody else, okay? So get creative with that. Are you asking for referrals? Are you doing events, right? The, most of your clients, suppose there's a statistic out there that says that every one of your clients is worth five to six referrals and, and you don't even know it, okay? If that's true, are we actually asking for referrals, okay? So that's another one, okay, client referrals. The next one is, the next one is, is we're gonna move into more 2020 and beyond, okay? Online marketing, what are you doing Online marketing wise, okay, we're, 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 we're doing our best to build a brand and help agents and, and get attention in the marketplace. What are you doing in your local market to get attention? Okay, are you doing some online marketing? Are you running some ads in your area? Are you build, do you have a website? Are you present online? Do you have a website? Okay, the, and, and some of this is gonna be like super elementary, but the average age of an insurance agent is 59 and a half and most don't have this stuff, okay? Website, do you have a Facebook page? Do you have a LinkedIn? Do you have an Instagram, okay? Do you have a YouTube where your clients are putting up testimonials? Do you have, are you doing online marketing and are you, are, are you, are, when someone, so the, the point is, when someone, if someone were to ever search for you, what would they find? Do it yourself. Go to Google right now, search yourself, search your name. What would they find? Does it create a good first impression, a bad first impression? Does your Facebook page have a bunch of stuff it shouldn't? I don't know, right? The, at the end of the day, you need to be present online. Our world is shifting that way. You need to be present online. Online marketing is a great way to be present online. You need to be, especially in your local market, you gotta be present, okay? The, the, what, 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 is, what does Cardone say? If I don't know you, I can't flow you, okay? Online marketing is a good way to do that. The fifth way, okay, is you, need, you can buy leads, right? If you don't get enough from networking, cold calling, referrals, marketing, et cetera, you can actually buy leads from someone, okay? If you mention that Cody mentioned buying leads on that video from January the 8th of 2020, okay? Dylan, how, how, how big of a deal should we do? Maybe five bucks off the regular price per lead? That's a big discount, by the way because our leads don't cost that much, okay? Five bucks off is a big percentage, all right? Five bucks off if you actually call in and take advantage right away. And what we'll do is, we'll do it, you know what? We may cap it once we get to about probably 40 people or so, which I could see happening pretty quick, but you know what? Call in, try that, 833-402-4368, all right? So who are you buying leads from? That's a valid way of how you could gain clients every single week. The top most successful agents in our industry are doing this weekly. I know an insurance agent right now that I just spoke to recently that I'm coaching that's spending $1,000 to $2,000 per week on leads. And when you buy leads, quit complaining they don't work and just remember that maybe you don't work. Okay. And it may not always be the leads and typically it isn't. A lead is only as valuable as the hands that they're put in. Okay. So when someone puts leads in your hands, how valuable are they? All right, so remember that when you're going out and you're looking at gaining clients, that, that none of this matters. None of this matters if you don't actually sit down with people every single week. You're looking to help people. You have to, when I was, reason, only reason I was successful, if you're a new agent and you're watching, the only reason I was successful my very first year in the insurance business is I said, 
I'm going to sit down with 10 people every single week. And if I do that, I'll be successful. So I did whatever it took, cold door knocking, cold calling, leads, warm market, et cetera, et cetera. I did whatever it took to get in front of people. And I always sat with 10. And when I sat with 10, I made a couple grand a week. whoop de doo I didn't even know how to spell insurance. I wasn't good at sales. I, you know, I had no experience, et cetera. The whole goal to gain clients is to get in front of people. All right, let's see if you know them. There are seven big time prospecting mistakes that you are probably making when you're trying to prospect with prospects. And I'm gonna cover them right now in depth. I promise you wanna say to the end, okay? Cause I may have a special bonus for you at the end of the video. The number one, and I'm gonna to touch on these and I'm gonna go through them in depth, right? They wanna know everything. They're not organ, you know, uh, or, organize, organization, redo, low energy, won't invest, procrastinate, and they wanna change it, right? What, what do those mean to you and how can you avoid those? Because I'm telling you, if you can eliminate these seven, you will absolutely have better prospecting habits and things happen. If you think about this, if you get one extra deal, because 92% of agents fail, if you get one extra deal per week, simply by not making mistakes. That's pretty easy, right? That's an extra 50 deals. Let's just say that you average $500 per sell. You just made an extra $25,000 in one year simply by, and maybe more, right? I'm keeping it simple and low. And maybe you won't end up a statistic in a 92 percenter because guess what? You just made an extra 25 grand and that's on the low end, right? So the first one, a lot, every insurance agent, they feel like they gotta know everything. And if you're this way, I need you to fix it, okay? They wanna know everything before they do anything. That's a massive flaw that insurance agents have, is before I prospect, before I pick up the phone, it's a mistake, right? Before I pick it up, dude, I gotta know everything. I gotta read it all, I gotta know everything. Okay, this, uh, I don't know it all yet. I can't make a call, you know? It's like, dude, that, that's, a, that's not okay. You will never know everything. The sooner that you can understand that, the better, the more adaptive and flexible and coachable you are. And the fact that you can realize that I'm never going to know everything. Like when it comes to insurance, I don't know everything. There's times where people see all my videos that I don't know everything, right? But I know how to make money and how to survive in the industry. And this is a big one. You, you want to get to where you don't have to know everything to be successful. Right? That's a big one, big flaw. Most insurance agents think, dude, I have to know everything. I'm talking everything, the whole encyclopedia of the industry, impossible before I'm actually going to make a call, before I'm going to be successful, before I'm going to do anything. Okay. The second one, I feel like I need to get organized. Let me get my desk organized. Let me get everything in the perfect spot. Okay. Is that ready? Will that do well when I make calls? Now I need to rearrange it again. It's like, dude, I, it's like I'm, I'm getting ready to get ready. I'm not organized yet. You know, my script's not in the right, that's in that spot. Oh, water, water needs to be there. Okay, maybe I'm, maybe I'm good, right? And they're like, look for reasons not to work. They look for reasons not to pick up the phone, right? I'm getting ready to get ready. You will never be ready if that's the case. You'll never be perfectly ready. Just pick up the phone and start dialing, right? Start prospecting, big mistake. Feel like I need to get organized. Everything in the right spot, okay? Hopefully that's not you, if it is, I warned you, okay? Because again, I want you to be a part of the 8%, not the 92. Organized. Who cares? Doesn't matter, okay? The next one is when their sales manager gives them a script. They wanna redo everything, the whole system. Okay, he says I need to make 82 calls. I think if I make 28, still has an eight and a two, I think it'll be fine, you know? Or hey, I've got this great script and they've been using it for 37 years and it works. I don't use that word. Let me take that out. Oh, let me put this word in. Let me, let me spend two hours. Cause I had somebody do this in my office one time. They, they give them the script, follow this, do this. I'm coachable. Cody, I'm coachable. I'll listen. I'm ready. I promise I'll do what you say. I give them the script. I tell them what to do. And guess what? They're over there retyping out the script and changing everything before they pick up the phone. If one of your agents are doing this, they will never survive. Get rid of them. If it, you're doing it yourself, man, I hope that you'll cut this out. Because again, because you're not coachable if, if you won't listen and do what someone says when they say, do this. And, and then they want to redo everything because their way is better. They've been in the industry for five minutes and their way is better than yours, right? Man, that one's just annoying, okay? The fourth one, low energy, right? Negative, whiny, complain a lot. They come in and they're like, you know, 
I don't know if I got it today. And I, did, I, I would fall, fall with my wife, and they bring on this drama to the office, you know, and couldn't sleep. My dog barked once, and it ruined my day. And, you know, my kid puked on me, and, and, and you know, the pool's leaking. Jeez Louise, you know. My, my whole day's over. The week's going to suck. This probably won't be a good month because I had a good month last month, so I probably won't have a good one this month. You know, it's like, what does that even mean? Like, if you had a good one this last month, you've got a better chance of having a good one this month just because, right? That's, that's just a mistake where, where when you come in or, or, or they get low energy because they let the past call where someone said, Cody, I hate you. Betty, do you hate me too? Like they get on the call and they're like, before they know it, they're like, man, I, I'm going to take that energy, that freaking sucky energy into this call. And before I know it, I'm going to have a freaking bad call after bad call after bad call because I can't get my energy right. That's why I make my team twice a day. We do jumping jacks, push-ups, whatever. I'm like, dude, we are waking the freak up. We are not letting the morning affect the afternoon and the afternoon affect the next morning and et cetera. Or, the, or you know, whatever happened before work. I'm like, dude, you walk through those doors, you change. You, you are great, ready to go. You're freaking, um, you're in a great mood. You know, you check yourself at the door, right? That's what they say, okay? So, low energy, that's a bad one. And, and if that's you and you're like, dude, my energy sucks. I'm draining people. You're draining me through the video camera right now. We, we gotta cut that out. We have to absolutely cut that out. That's why I love conferences. That's why I love the CA cell system because it allows you and your team to plug in to positive content every single day to keep you from failing Okay, to keep you from failing, specifically. Low energy, nobody likes bad energy, man. It's, don't do it, okay, don't do it. Don't let that be you. Next one, number five, won't invest any money in themselves, you know, or when they do, if this doesn't work, I'm never investing again. Like, dude, I've got $12 for leads, you know, $12. <laughs> or, 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 you know, um, I spent $36 on that cold call list. And I didn't set one appointment. That list vendor, they're garbage, man. They're horrible. Or I'm not going to put any money into this, Cody, until it gives me money in return. It's never going to give you any money until you give it some, right? You got to, you got to, you know, put some gas in the freaking tank sometimes. You got to fuel this rocket ship that you're on. The insurance industry is the number one career on planet Earth. It ain't the sexiest. You don't line up at career day begging to get in the industry. But 92% of insurance agents fail because it's the most difficult and there's more millionaires in it because it's freaking incredible, man. It's the absolute, I'm obsessed with it. It's an amazing career. But you have to invest into it. What does that mean? That means that we look at this like it's a business. You have a business opportunity right now. And, and the last thing you want to do is screw it up, right? I heard a statistic the other day that um, less than 4% of businesses in the country earn seven figures. Less than 4% oh, of all businesses in the U.S. earn a million dollars a year. But there are more millionaires in this industry than any other industry in the world. If it's so tough, if most businesses fail within the first couple years, and if it's so tough to make a million bucks, but it's, but it's, but it's, the number one career to do it is insurance, then, then you're, in the right, you're in the right vehicle. And so remember, you've got to invest before it'll invest back. I'm telling you, I don't care what you think, you know, you, you, I'm just, this, is, this is reality, okay? This is reality. I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to be honest with you. Procrastination. A lot of agents love to procrastinate. They, they're, they're, they're like, dude, I'm ready. I'm excited. I'm going to make a ton of money. It's going to be unbelievable. I'm going to start tomorrow. I love it when I talk to people and they're like, man, I'm getting on this new workout plan. I'm getting to get fit. I'm getting ready. I'm starting next week. What's wrong with starting now? What's wrong with starting tonight? You know, like I'm doing this. I just did a half marathon and I, I, I set it up in a week and didn't train, right? Because you don't need to. Yeah, should you? Yeah, probably. But it doesn't mean that this should keep you from doing stuff, man. Like if, 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 if you making calls right now is going to help you be more successful than making the calls tomorrow or next week, then make them now. There's nothing that you can't do, that, 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 that you want to do in the future that you can't do now, right? Most people want to naturally procrastinate. Like, dude, I'm going to work so hard. Next week is my week. I'm going to get it. You know, it, dude, this, this week can be your week. If you just freaking change your mindset and just commit to making it your week, 
procrastination drives me absolutely insane. It's a weak mindset. It's 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 a learn. It's it's a habit. It's a learned trait that you you've embodied over the over the last thirty two years of your life or whatever you know. And it, but it, but it, that don't mean it's okay because it ain't okay. Do it now. Don't do it later. Okay. If you can do it later, you can do it now. Change it. Right. Most people are like they get into it and they want to change the system. Okay. They're like okay, this works. This is a system. Like, okay, Cody, I made $4,800 last week. It was great. Now, how do I do the same thing? How do I make the same amount of money, if not more, without, without having to work as hard? They're like, Cody, I want to make, make, make the same amount of money, but I want to make no calls and I want to work half as much. It's freaking impossible. What are you talking about? You know, that's insane. They want to change the successful system that's worked for them and others and so many others in the past, and they want to change it all up. And because because they know that they've been in the minute, you know, they've been in the industry 42 seconds, and they know what's best, right? They know what's best. If it works, don't change it. Okay, I want you to be successful, which is why if you're prospecting, if you're selling, if you're trying to make a bunch of bunch of money, you're never gonna know everything. Never gonna be actually organized, and, it, and it's 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 dumb anyway. You know, don't redo it. Trust it. Keep your energy up all the time, stay positive, invest, don't do it later, do it now, and don't try to change stuff, just do stuff. All right, if you think these seven mistakes are good, you're gonna love the last video. How to present four insurance products at once in a bundle. It's right there, it's the end there. Hey, who doesn't wanna sell four insurance products at once, right? You're thinking, dude, I'm selling one policy, why don't I just sell four right now?